Welcome to the Shenmue AM2 Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Shenmue AM2 Podcast. We're your hosts, Andrew. And Matt. And this time, it's episode 14. Uh, it's going to be our Shenmue 3 plot predictions, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Such as they are for me. I don't know. Yeah, we're both kind of... <laughs> we'll see where this episode goes. I think this is this is one of the episodes that I was most excited to do. This is one of the episodes I was most afraid to do. <laughs> Uh, so, just a few things before we get started. Um, I watched a video on YouTube, and it was explaining about how you can plug HDMI stuff into PlayStation VR. So I immediately told Matt, I'm like, hey, are you going to be home? Because he has the PlayStation VR headset. And I kind of said I had a surprise for him, and I brought over my Dreamcast that has an HDMI output on it. And we played Shenmue in the cinema mode on the PlayStation uh, VR headset. It's essentially like you're sitting in a theater, watching it on a screen, while the headset is, for lack of a better term, attached to your face. Yeah, it's just a mode that the VR has. It's not, it's not true VR, but it's like a way to, yeah, basically what you said, view a 2D image on like a virtual big screen. Like, if you've only got a 32-inch TV, put on your VR headset and set it to the biggest size, and now you've got a virtual theater screen or a virtual 72-inch TV. It was pretty neat. I'll post a link to a vi- the video that I watched um, in the con- in the description on our YouTube channel. Um, the really neat part about it, and Matt and I both agreed on this, we were playing it without sound just because we didn't have a cable, like, I didn't bring a cable with me to uh, plug in the sound into a, uh, like, set headset or something, but we started it right from the get-go, and the dream sequence mm-hmm. looked fucking amazing. It already looks amazing anyways, like, just normally, but when you're in that virtual theater, like, normally, when you're playing the game, the virtual theater, you know, it's got a border around it, and everything else... It's got a border around the screen, and everything else is just blackness. It doesn't give you, like, virtual seats and all that. It's just blackness all around. So in that dream sequence, where the entire screen is black except for Lan D, the edges of the screen kind of disappeared because they just melded into the blackness that was on the sides. So it's just black all around you, and you're, like, in a, a room alone with Lan D, and he's right in your face. <laughs> it, it was... <laughs> And it, it was so awesome just seeing it like that. Mm. And again, this is one of these new experiences that we're having with a game that's like 17 years old. Mm-hmm. It's Ooh. awesome. It's so, so, so neat just to discover these things. And anyone that has an HDMI output on a Dreamcast and has PlayStation VR, I really suggest you do this. And the dream sequence was amazing. Yeah. We watched, also watched the intro. Um, if you just, when you turn on this game, if you don't hit start, uh, with Shenhua and the Phoenix or Eagle or Falcon, so, Falcon something. <laughs> some type of bird, uh, that looked amazing as well. Mm. Uh, the next thing we want to touch on was there was a Kickstarter update, uh, ep- or update number 66. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a whole lot. It was a video. It was almost six minutes in length. It was five minutes and 55 seconds. It was just talking about story and how to build a story. And I was just looking all around Yu Suzuki. I'm like, yeah, yeah, story, story. Where's the secret footage in the background? (laughs) (laughs) I was doing that, too, the first time I watched it. Um, I was reading the subtitles as as soon as they popped up, the new set. Yeah. Preaching was saying, because obviously I don't speak Japanese, so I'd speed through the subtitle and then just be, what's in the background, what's in the background? There wasn't a whole lot of... Shenmue related information in this the, the only video that was playing in the background was the reveal trailer from 2015 that was very disappointing <laughs> <laughs> they did ask him at the end if the Sword of the Seven Stars would be making an appearance mm-hmm. and he jokingly says like let me reset or something yeah. to get ready for the question again it's like they kept an outtake in there and uh, it's going to be there well, yeah. <laughs> Ho- hopefully the very first thing we see is that sword. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the only time we see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, my it, first prediction, we will see that sword exactly once at the beginning, and then the, then it's, it will not play a part anymore. <laughs> 
See, I don't think so. I think he's going to carry it around, but and it'll, it'll be j- ex- identical to Skyward Sword. He just points it straight up, <laughs> shoots a beam out of it. No, just kidding, just kidding. He can hold it up in the air, and it'll tell you where to go next. <laughs> <laughs> it's What was that called? I can't remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next little thing we want to touch on is uh, next episode, episode 15, we are going to have a guest on. Uh, we are going to have Adam Scipione uh, from... He's making a documentary, um, slash starring in a documentary, uh, A Gamer's Journey, The Definitive History of Shenmue. Um, so we're super, super excited to have him on. Um, we're so happy that he agreed to be on. Um, it'll be an interesting uh, episode because it'll be kind of like what we do with James, talking, but then James is talking about how he's you know in the modding community and this. We're going to try to get as much information out of him as possible as well. I haven't been following that as much as I should have, so I have questions for you about it, but I should probably just save them for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's probably more qualified to, uh, <laughs> to answer them, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I want to talk about is something that happened yesterday. Um, my wife and I were in the mall, mm-hmm. and we ran into Matt, but Matt didn't see us. Oh, no. You're going to shame me. I'm totally shaming Matt here. <laughs> uh, I, the, He was like, I was on a ramp behind him, and there was like a half wall between you're, us. You're basically a troll under a bridge, from my perspective. Pretty, I, that's ex- Yeah, that's a very great way to describe I, it. I was like, what? what's this voice coming from below me? And I just whispered behind him, I said, Mother's Earth. Said the troll under the bridge. <laughs> and what did you say? I said, huh, what? <laughs> And then you said, and then I said, I think I said nine dragons, and which I'm pretty, is wrong. Pretty sure that's wrong. Yeah, you should have said. I should have said uh, comrades. There you go. I've I've got the like I while I was playing I got the the uh, the method in my mind for remembering how to do it, but you you startled me, so I was all put off. But <laughs> in in my mind, like the way I have it is, if they say Father's Heaven, then I I think. So my options are nine dragons or comrades. Father is like a manly thing compared to mother, and dragons are more destructive. That's kind of a manly trait. So father and dragons, mother and comrade. Comrade is more like a, a friendly, motherly trait. That's how I remember them. But in the moment, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't because I was just put on the spot. This is why you're bad at QTEs, Matt. It is. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to crack my Sparrow here. <sighs> that was a real sound effect. Real, <sighs> real Foley. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I did that the other day, and my wife just shook her head at me. <laughs> <laughs> I found a can I found a can of uh, coffee in, in the supermarket, and it was shaped like the Japanese cans, and I, like, mimed drinking it. And I was like, ah, good, and she just shook her head. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be great if someone ran into you in that grocery store? <laughs> Yeah. Are you mimicking Ryo Hazuki <laughs> of the Hazuki Dojo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's let's hop into our our Shenmue three predictions. So um, we're going to kind of talk about things that we're going to ha- that we in- as individuals will think will happen in the plot. Um, the format of what we're going to do here is we both Matt has his written down on his phone. I have mine in a notebook here. Uh, one of us is going to do our entire predictions. Oh, okay. And then the other one will do all of theirs, just so we're not influenced yeah. um, by you know what Matt has written down or what I have written down, and vice versa. Uh, so we have a Hong Kong uh, $2 coin here. <laughs> uh, so if the two lands face up, you'll go first. If it lands face down... Is this one of Ren's trick coins? No, see, there's some sort of... Oh my god, it is a Ren. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if the two lands face up, you go first. That if lands Ren. face down, I'll go first. Okay. I guess I'm going first. Is that a face? No, that's a... Whatever that is. Go ahead. That just happened to land on my lag. (laughs) That was a very hot coin toss. So, my... Wait, I gotta test this thing and see if it's legit. (laughs) Ah, I dropped it. It's right there. We'll never... Oh, land on my leg, too. (laughs) (laughs) It just attracted the legs. (laughs) Um, Anyways, go ahead. So, my... when In my last playthrough, there's... A couple things that became very apparent to me because I was watching this or playing this, taking notes. One is at the very start of the game when you're watching the cutscene when you come home, Mondi's in the dojo. Uh, why does he only take one mirror? Because he doesn't know you have the other one. 
But think about that. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we have two factions, right? Mm-hmm. There's this some sort of ultimate power if you have both of the mirrors. I don't even know if there's two factions. It feels like there might be just one faction and Ryo Hazuki and his father are just unaligned. <laughs> See? I don't... I think that's... And we'll kind of get into this a bit more when I when I elaborate on this. So if Matt and I each have a mirror, mm-hmm. Matt kills me. Okay. What happens? I'm into this. Okay. Matt automatically has both mirrors. Sounds good. Okay. So the, what kind of storyline does that make for? So if, if Lon D has zero mirrors, uh-huh. there's two mirrors and two factions. Mm-hmm. Lon D's faction has zero. Iwa has both. Yeah. Okay. So you think he'd use them for whatever? No, used for? I think there's yeah. more than two factions. I think there's always going to be a party without a mirror hmm. and two parties with one mirror hmm. to keep everything. Because then, if one party gets, you know, say one party gets one mirror from the other, yeah. the other party still, the third party still has the other mirror. So I think there's going to be always one party without a mirror, and in the ideal situation, to keep everything peaceful, the other two would each have one. So, who's in this third faction, and have we met anyone from them? Well, leads me to my next point. When you're in the basement and you find the other mirror, what else can you find in the basement? Move scrolls. What else? Pictures. Who? A picture of who? Your father, and I can't remember if you find out who. Is it the guy, the old guy that you meet in Shenmue 2? You want to do? Yeah. No. no. Uh, so, it's is it Iwa Zhao? Hazuki and someone else. Is it Zhao Suming? Someone else that's important. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, that, so we don't know. We don't know at this point. Oh, okay. Potentially Lan Di, maybe. <clears throat> so, two things about that photo. What happens if you don't find the photo in the basement? Nothing? No. You can, The game will not let you finish Shenmue, mm-hmm. the first game, without that photo. What happens if you miss it? When Fukusan says goodbye to you at the end, mm-hmm. he gives you the photo. Oh, okay. So that photo... There's no other reason for that to happen other than the fact that this photo is pushing the plot line along somewheres. Hmm. So if I take, say there's a photo of Matt and I, what information does that photo give us? There was two people. One was named Andrew, one was named Matt. Was there two people? There's two people in the photo. So how does the photo get taken? Oh, well, yeah. So there's... You ask a stranger to take a photo of you. <laughs> hey, I'm getting his view on the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> um, always reciprocate photos when you're a tourist, mm-hmm. if the other people are tourists, by the way. Um, <laughs> so if someone had to take that photo. Yeah. So there's a third party there, and this photo is pushing the plot line along somewheres. Mm. The other major thing, and it's a very simple line that Yuan Dejou says... When you meet him, and before you get interrupted or whatever, he says, Lon D thinks Iwa killed his father. Mm. So it's Why in the world would they say the word thinks? Well, just so they, they have room to uh, wiggle with whether or not he did it. Exactly. Mm. So they're not giving you a definitive answer. So Which means he probably didn't do it. Otherwise they would have... Because there's a potentially third party here okay so i i think there's another piece that we're missing Mm -hmm. i think shenmue 3 will give us introduce us to that third piece and then shenmue 4 assuming we get it Mm -hmm. will progress the storyline beyond that point is this third party evil i have no idea Hmm. i always assume the person in that picture was was uh lundy's father like there used to be, like, it, that's who I think it their, is as well. Their, their fathers were were good friends, and it appears that the Shenmu tree is in the photo. Oh, is it? Okay. Appear. That's my opinion. I think it's that tree. Can't recall at the moment. So I think the third party is Shen Hua's dad. Shen Hua's dad. Oh yeah. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the, their organizations could be or. What they all stand for now? What? <clears throat> what for? And that's the thing that that's. I'm not gonna. I don't want to make any predictions there. Now that being said, in the trailer in update 58, um, or no, update 65. Excuse me. Update 65. It appears that Shen Hua's house has been tossed around. Mm-hmm. Um, so leading me to think that a, Lan Di didn't know where the other mirror was, so he assumed Shen Hua's dad had it. Okay. 
um, because he probably already knows that Shenhua's dad is aware of the mirrors because that's probably a picture of him and Iwa at Shenhua's house or Shenhua's dad's house. Shenhua's dad probably took the photo. Hmm. Um, so he probably, Lan Di probably thinks that uh, Shenhua's dad had the other mirror. Kind of feeding into my three-party system here. Hmm. Um, I think... Obviously, there's going to be magic involved. Um, the powers of the mirrors. I don't. I don't know how in depth I think the magic will get. I. I, I don't. I. It's. I don't really know how to elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. I just think we're going to have this three-party system going on. Um, magic will be involved. The other thing is, Zhuing, the half of the Yin Yang sign that Zhuing uh, gives Rio. That is going to play, I think, a similar role to the photo. So you, this is something that is forced upon you. It'll be in your inventory. Mm-hmm. You can't complete the game without it. And it's going to help Rio prove not necessarily his identity, but his who he knows, where he's coming from, what he's doing. I don't know who he'll be proving it to. Um, I'm going to assume it is Zhu Ying's brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Who is good or bad? I don't know, but I think he's one of the the three parties. Hmm. I think, because there's those other members of the Chiyu men, Mm -hmm. um, with the other parties of the Chiyu men, I think we're going to potentially see them, because there's four of them, is there not? Uh, Yeah, I think so. And there's three villages in this. So potentially we could have one of them kind of, I don't want to say a boss fight, but one of them running each village per se, and then culminating with a fight with Londi. Or maybe Londi is not the top guy there. Mm-hmm. Story-wise, I think the game is going to remain in China. I don't think we're never going to get too far. Never going back to Japan. I've already come to accept that. And I think part of the, kick, the Kickstarter has spoiled a few things. Um, it says the areas. Yeah. So I think those are the areas that we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see more. No. The other thing is that the Kickstarter, I think, spoiled, is the tier of rewards that has the phone card. Why? Uh, why are you going to have to call Joy, Nozomi, Guizang, Fukusan, Ine-san, and others? I assumed it was just to catch up. You yeah, think, you think it's going to be for for a reason? No, I think it's not for a reason. Okay, so they're not going to be in the game. They're oh, not going to yeah, be yeah. in the plot part of the game. <clears throat> Which the one real big bummer there for me is Guizhang. Okay, so I don't think Guizhang is going to be part of the. In it depends where you can use this phone card, how early on in the game. But why would you need to call them if you can interact with them mm. in the game, right? So I think that phone card reward kind of spoiled that. And I'm not, when I say spoiled, I'm not using this in a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think you're going to interact with them. I think the grander scale of like good and evil in this storyline, I don't think that's going to be explored in Shenmue 3. I think that's going to be explored in Shenmue 4 with you know the ultimate powers of these mirrors coming to be. Mm. I think Shenmue 3 is going to be a bit more small potato stuff. Yeah, I feel like Shenmue 3 is going to be more... More of just a learning experience for Rio. It's just, yeah, just. I think at some point we're going to re encounter Baihu as well. Yeah. Why? We kicked his ass. We don't need to see him again. <laughs> in case he stands no chance. I don't know. I just. He. The only way he could come back is if he, like, decides to help Rio in some way. Because there's no point in him challenging you again. Do you think he would help Rio? Because to be honest, that thought never crossed my mind until you literally just said it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If like if he feels like a such a specifically designed character that you wouldn't not see him again. But I mean, if he comes to fight Rio, it's just like, dude, I already beat you and I've gotten better since then. Like, why? Why do you think you're gonna beat me? <laughs> like, so yeah, I can't think of why how they would use him again. But I don't know. Um, something I would really hope to see. And I was, I didn't even think of this till this morning, till the idea was presented to me. Uh, did you watch, we're recording this on May 2nd, mm-hmm. uh, did you watch this week's episode of Frame Trap from Easy Allies? I'm like halfway through. So at the start when they, Ben jokes about it being a Yakuza podcast as well, Yeah. and Huber talks about the real estate, um, 
he talks about how you have to face this other real estate rival mm. in a game of Outrun, yeah. the arcade machine. So I would really like to see the arcade machines have consequences in this game. <laughs> I would like to see them not necessarily further the plot, but maybe side stories or something. Because it's great that, you know, Hang On and Space Harrier in these games are in Shenmue. Yeah. But they're they're time wasters. They're I need to I need to burn off some clock. It can just be like the the darts experts in Shenmue too. It can be arcade game experts that you have to find and challenge. Even even more than that though, like have something storyline related to it, like not necessarily just getting like a mini QTE boxing machine or something for beating it. Mm. Push the storyline, push a side quest. Um, do something, something with it. You show you show Shenhua an arcade game, and her mind literally explodes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Can't compute. <laughs> I think the relationship between Rio and Shenhua will continue to evolve a bit. I think it's going to be a pretty slow evolution. I think that relationship is going to be a slow burn, mm-hmm. um, with them realizing something at the end. I don't know what that something is, but to kind of really mesh their their connection together. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh, I think Zhuang will be in the game. Uh, she was not specifically mentioned in the phone card yeah. uh, thing. And I don't want to say it's a side quest with her and her brother, because I think her brother's going to be more... I think her brother's going to end up being more important to the storyline than she... Excuse me. Uh, than she is. So... I don't know. I, I just feel we're going to probably see the res- the end of that storyline. Um, I think her brother will not survive Shenmue 3 um, if we encounter him. Okay. You think he'll pull a Darth Vader and re- redeem himself at the end? I don't get that Star Wars reference. I have oh, only fuck. ever seen episode uh, one, the best God one. Damn, I keep forgetting. Like It's just like every single person knows Star Wars, except you. <laughs> I, I know a couple things. You can, like... Um, I, Han and Greedo shot first, something like that. Okay. Um, all the jokes about, in the original one, Lando being the only black guy in the universe. <laughs> because I think he's the only... I don't know. Um, and one of the stormtroopers hitting his head in okay. one of the hallways or something. You know that minor trivia. Yeah. Um, that's really it for Star Wars. Back on track here. Um, I think going through the villages, you might end up doing it by train um, in Shenmue 3. That'd be um, fun. Based on the uh, trailer from the old What Shenmue, or not, excuse me, not What Shenmue, the Project Berkeley disc from Virtual Fighter 3. Is there a train scene in that? There's a, there is a train scene in that. Oh, nice. Um, I don't know how they're going to implement the arcade games into the actual thing unless they're I have no, I have no they idea. They can do whatever they want. They put an arcade game on a pedestal in the basement of a bombed out uh, building. You're absolutely right. <laughs> um, I think Ren will be in the game. Well, that's already confirmed. You can play as him. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, there's going to be a conflict between Ren and Ryo. And I think at the end of the day, Ren will make the right choice, whatever the situation is. Uh, but Ryo is really going to have to kind of reel him in. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I think Ren's still all about the... Well, I think Ren's putting on the face that he cares, but I think in the back of his mind he's still about treasure. Yeah. If that makes sense. I always got the idea that he puts on the face that he likes treasure, but in the back of his mind he's actually a nice guy. He actually cares. So I always felt it was the opposite, where he's got like a bravado front, but in, he's just a big teddy bear underneath. <laughs> I don't know. I think we'll see Wong show up. Because um, I think he's just going to tag along with Ren. <laughs> just going to pull in on his junk. What? That's the name of the boat. Oh, that just re-say, re-say that sentence in your mind. He's just going to pull on his junk? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a Chinese junk. It's the name of the ship that he lives on. <laughs> and I think the ma- like the leader of the Chiyu Mana is going to be revealed as Cool Z. Okay, you should have opened with that prediction because that's the uh, <laughs> that's the uh, that's your pre- that's your prediction as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, those are my real, th- I guess, major predictions. Um, stuff that I hope to see. I really want to see some Saga arcade games in here. Um, I want to see forklift driving. I want darts <laughs> to be as as similar as possible to the old ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I want this game to have a good world in it for me to explore. I want the story to stay as good as it's been. 
I want the mechanics of the game to be improved upon, but I don't want them to stray too far from what they are right now. Mm -hmm. I want as many original voice actors as possible. Uh, The phone call, I think, is where those are really going to come into play. And um, I want to enjoy it when it comes out. Yeah, that's the big one. And no matter what, I'm going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make myself enjoy it. I will. (laughs) Um, so those are my kind of predictions. Again, I was kind of vague. Um, well, your whole three three party system there is a little more in depth than I get, I, I believe. I just I think everything leads me to believe that. And then there's talk of like you know uh, getting these mirrors to this ultimate power, you know, resurrecting like the terracotta army and stuff. From if anyone, it's a thing in China where they're. These made it this huge army made of terracotta mm. um, clay pot material essentially. Um, I think you know that's where the storyline's headed, but I they have to save something for Shenmue Four, right? And five and six. <laughs> don't don't even don't even <laughs> do not. Um, and I think three will have a cliffhanger ending. I hope I almost hope it doesn't because we're not guaranteed a Shenmue Four. Mm-hmm. Um, I and I. It, in the back of my mind, I really, really am not comfortable with not getting the story all done. But I don't want it to be compromised either. Yeah, that's why I'm okay if we get another cliffhanger and another one after that. Just tell the story how you want to tell it, you. <sighs> don't push your luck, Matt. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on what I think will happen. Okay. Do you want me to go? You go. You go, girl. <laughs> Uh, so mine aren't in any specific order. I just wrote them down stream of consciousness as they came to me. Uh, so yeah, like I said, Ren, Ren is going to be a playable character at some point. So, but so is Shenhua. And I think when Shenhua is playable, that'll just be like a stealth section. <laughs> like you won't be using like mystical powers and fighting. It'll just be like, oh no, I'm a weak little girl. I have to hide and not get caught. It'll be like the old warehouse district section again. Ren, maybe they'll let him fight. Maybe you can control Ren and fight. But that would give that would be an entirely new move set. So probably not. Under this budget, I bet you you can't fight as either Ren or Shenhua. I bet. Um, the next one I wrote down was that Niao Sun, who we've seen art of, and I think we've even seen a 3D model. Maybe she's the girl. The, the Chia Man. Yeah, she'll be like the Don Nui of this game, where she's like a constant presence, and she'll be the final boss. There'll be other I th- I few men bosses, but she'll be the final boss, and they'll all be taking orders from her. I think you're spot on with that. Yeah. That, I was thinking of what I was gonna, how I was gonna relate her into my notes, and I just said, you know, I think we're gonna see them and potentially fight them and have one of them be the master of each village or something. But yeah, because when you say kind of the constant in the game, mm. it, it immediately harkened back to Did you play Resident Evil Three? How the nemesis just keeps popping up. Yeah. Well, I don't mean like that. I don't mean no, she's no, going to like no. bust <laughs> into your scene and chase you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think you'll you'll kind of have those encounters um, mm-hmm. as you did with Dune, you in the second one. Stars. Oh, God, it's Nyo Sun. Run. <laughs> she just destroys Brad Vickers. <laughs> she's got an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> just right through, fist right through the heart of <laughs> chicken heart Brad Vickers. Yeah. <laughs> My God, Resident Evil games are good. <laughs> um, so I don't think Shenhua will accompany you the whole time. Like you're with you're with her the whole time at the end of the game of part two, but probably the beginning of part three you'll be with her, and then when you go to a new place, she'll probably stay at like a, some sort of home base in each city, and then she'll probably get kidnapped at some point. I bet. I think you're right with the home base thing. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know if she'll get kidnapped or not, but yeah, I don't imagine something, there will be some sort of. Something with her. Yeah. I'm wondering if Zhu Ying will get to fight Niao Sun at some point, simply because Ryo doesn't want to fight a girl still, <laughs> even though he should have learned his lesson by now. You're, man, I think you're right with that as well. Because, <laughs> um, like, I don't think there's going to be a lot of character growth for Ryo in this. Like, it's going to be pretty status quo. He's not going to let go of revenge in this game. Yeah. Um... Uh, I think maybe at some point Ryo could lose the Phoenix Mirror and have to race to recover it before it's delivered to Landi or Nyo Sun or whoever. Because he's had it for too long without getting into trouble over it. Like, he's never lost it since he got it. 
What are you talking about? The Phoenix Mirror. Yeah, Wong stole his bag. Oh yeah, the mirror was in it? that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was thinking that was just the bag and the mirror was in the back pocket. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but Wong didn't know that he had the mirror. He yeah. had something important. I think like a bad guy is specifically going to get the mirror from Rio. Zangief? Sure. <laughs> the bad guy. Razor Ramon? Yes. <laughs> Al Pacino as Scarface? Any of them is going to get it, yeah. Um, so... When they did that uh, post-mortem of Shenmue years ago, and they did like the 16 chapters and the pictures depicting the 16 chapters that he originally had in mind, after like the fourth or fifth chapter, Ryo was always wearing a green kung fu outfit. Like that's his that's his outfit for most of the story. It seemed like 70 percent of the story at least. So I think in this game you're gonna find some sort of martial arts master. I don't know who it would be. But you're gonna like really go under their tutelage and like adopt their school uniform or whatever, which will be the green kung fu outfit, and you're gonna have to get rid of your jeans and jacket. Well, he's been wearing them for an extremely long time. <laughs> um, do you remember the old screenshots of Shenmue Three? Uh, like yeah, what, original yeah, yeah. ones, yeah. Where it looks like he's at some sort of rural martial arts school. Yeah, I think that definitely lends to, mm-hmm. to what you're speaking of. Um. I think Ryo is going to get, like, a major level up in power in this game. Like, he's he's had two games where he's, you know, he's a really good fighter, but there's still people who far, far outclassed him, like, almost in, like, a mystical way. Like, they're just, like, so much better than him, and he's just a really good, normal person, and they're almost like superheroes. But he's going to take a step towards, maybe with the supernatural chi stuff, he's going to take his first step to, into that world of, like... Matrix powers, basically. I agree. Of, of like, and he's going to get a major level up, and he he's probably going to try to fight Londi, but he's still going to lose in this game. Like, Niao San will be the final boss, and then maybe there will be a cutscene after that where he gets to confront Londi, and he goes at him, and he like maybe punches him once or something, and then he just gets totally destroyed. Now, do you think we can have a game where he does not in this game where he does not fight Londi? No, I think he has to fight Londi. That's but, why I think he needs a level up in order to do it without being killed outright. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> now, do you think he has the ability to... Uh, or, like, do you think from a writing, like, script aspect of the game, I should say, that they can kind of recycle that same idea, though? Because that happened in Shenmue 2? What do you mean? Not fight Londi. You, you think they'll do that again? No, I'm saying... I'm, I'm asking if you, you think they'll do it again. No, no, no. Okay. I think you have to fight him. I think you have to fight him as well. Yeah, and lose. <laughs> you think he's going to lose? Yeah. Kind of like so. <laughs> kind of like a Rocky one yeah. type idea where he proves himself, but he doesn't win? No, I think he gets one good punch in, whereas before this level up, he wouldn't have be, be, been able to touch him at all. Like, he'll get, he'll fight him for a sec, and he'll punch Londi, and Londi will be like, you made me bleed my own blood, and then he'll destroy him. <laughs> then Londi will have a Band-Aid on his face for all of Shenmue 4. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Where the story will end at Shenmue 4? <laughs> nope, please. probably not. Well, maybe. Um, I was going to say that Gui Zhang will show up in some way to help you, but then you reminded me that he's part of the phone call thing, so maybe he won't. I would love to see him show up. I'm thinking if he does show up, it won't be till Shenmue 4 <laughs> at this point. But I do want him to show up and team up with Ren and Ryo. Um, what did I write here? Quest is quest in this game is to find the truth about the ancient prophecy that seems to be about him and the mirror. Uh, the mirror. <laughs> this is the... Uh, it's about him and the mirror and and the girl, and uh, that's the trail that leads to Landi, and it's like, this game's gonna be it's much, like, most of this game's gonna be about learning the history and the mythology of this world of Shenmue. And I, maybe... I think you're right. Yeah. Because they need to slowly, slowly introduce it towards Shenmue 4. Mm. So that's where I think we can, excuse me, see the meat and potatoes yeah. of the, the mysticism and the magic and all of that. Still, I think Shenhua's past will remain largely a mystery, though. But maybe uh, if we do find out anything about this whole myth that she seems to know, I'm wondering if it's like maybe her and Ryo are like reincarnations of two ancient lovers or something in a tale about avert- averting the apocalypse <laughs> like they uh, 
like their souls are destined to work together to avert disaster somehow. Um, and even that, that lends the theory to, to my three-party system, because each then each one of them would have a mirror, and the other team wouldn't. Yeah. The bad guys. Team Zangief. <laughs> um, is anyone listening, picking up on the Zangief? I've, I've, not, Ralph I've not seen that, but I saw the commercial, and that was in it. So, <laughs> yes, I know um, what talking about and I think, like, have you, you've seen the copy of U.S. Shenmue, right? Mm-hmm. The yeah, how she has like the what appears to be like ceremonial outfit. Yeah, and it looks, I think that really lends to your idea of yeah, it looks like an ancient Chinese outfit. It looks like it, it's made out of leaves of the Shenhua tree. <laughs> um, so Zhu Ying's brother. This is what I was talking about with the Darth Vader thing. He seems bad. He'll do bad things, but at the end, he will redeem himself. And like you said, I think he'll die for it. But he'll, you know, he'll turn out to be good in the end, despite go- being corrupted by revenge and joining the bad guys. And do you think that'll be the turning point for Rio? Mm, I think he'll ponder it, but I think he'll still be wanting revenge by the end of this game. That'll just be another thing that'll that'll stick in his mind when he finally does See, I let go of revenge. I don't know if the revenge thing's going to be stuck in his craw or not. No. You think he'll grow that much in this game? I hope so. <laughs> you need to grow as a person, Ryo. Uh, and we will discover whether discover whether or not Iwao killed Landi's la- uh, dad and why. So we'll get some revelations about Iwao, um, whether they're good or bad, whether he's, you know, a bad guy, which I don't think he's, or if it's all a misunderstanding like it, it appears to be. <laughs> yeah, I think... That will that part of the uh, narrative or storyline will will be tied up in a nice little bow at the end of Shenmue Three, and then it'll kind of get into the bigger I don't want to say issue, but the bigger storyline as a whole. Because mm-hmm. like when you think about back to like when you see the storyboard chapters wise, the first game was only the first chapter, so clearly this was getting grander. The idea was for this to get grander in scale, mm. and hopefully, I, th- I hope it still does. And stops at Shenmue 4. I I literally cannot take this. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So that's all my predictions. Those are my my predictions. Um, People should send us theirs. Yeah, throw them in the comments. If we get enough, we could do an entire extra episode just on other people's predictions. Yeah, yeah. Put them in the comments on the uh, YouTube channel, Shenmue, or YouTube.com slash Shenmue M2 podcast. Uh, you can email them to shenmuam 2 podcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, send them as a direct message. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone that follows us, I try to follow back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Shenmu AM2 Pod. Facebook uh, on, as well. Uh, Facebook, we're, st- we're getting that working. We have the group up and running again. Um, so, yeah, uh, put them there. So, yeah, write out a big, long list of predictions, and we'll read them. And we'll comment on them. And that, that could be an entire content for another episode. <laughs> Claim them as our own. <laughs> no, we won't do that. No, we won't do that. <laughs> Stop nudging me, Matt. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's where we are on the social medias. Um, this was an exciting episode. This was... Do you feel better now? Yeah, I guess my predictions weren't as bad as I thought they would be. See, we, we kind of even took different approaches. You predicted more storyline, what you think will happen. Mm. I pr- My predictions were kind of what the game will be. Mm-hmm. Big picture. Um, big picture, and yours is... I like how we both kind of did them separately. We covered it all. And I like that I get to go first, because I think mine... It, the way we did this laid it out better, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, now when I edit this, I'm going to reverse them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Your technical skills. Um, so yeah, next episode we ha- we'll have Adam Scipione on. I'm super pumped for that. Um, we're going to talk to him. Then we will have a couple more episodes, um, probably in E3 predictions. Um, and we're going to try to film ourselves uh, for E3 watching it. Are we? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it, remember? <laughs> um, and uh, we do have another guest lined up. Um, pretty cool from the... I don't want to give any spoilers away. <laughs> um, but we do have another guest lined up. And hopefully have a few more guests lined up after that. Mm-hmm. And uh, What? I I'm trying to um, I'm gonna try to get Huber on here from Easy Allies because 
I so far tentatively Ian Hink from Easy Allies is going to come on my Twin Peaks podcast. So when he's on, I'm going to be like, "Hey, get Huber on my Chenmu podcast. <laughs> Help Spe- me." Speaking of, Matt's got some pretty exciting news about his love of Twin Peaks. <laughs> what? Oh, that. Uh, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> oh, they're like I don't know if I should say that. It might be confidential. They didn't say it was. We'll hold off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll talk about it once it's <laughs> once you have it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was, it's pretty cool that what's happening uh, with that. Mm. Um, yeah, I never thought that it might be confidential. <laughs> kind of, we're just having the cat back in the bag here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Where is your cat, anyway? Oh, yeah, he's right over there. there. He's sleeping. Matt's got this pretty cool cat named he's, Bowler, and mm-hmm. then this other cat that's terrified of me. Named Briscoe. Briscoe. Named at, they're both named after Briscoe County Jr., which is a, a Bruce Campbell show about cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's it for this episode, I think. Yep. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to try to pump out a few episodes before E3. And, uh, yeah. Who's our sponsor? This week, our sponsor is Ida Florists. Come for our flowers. Stay for our granddaughter. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.